with a public lecture from uh, Professor Francesco D'Andrea. Let me say a couple of words about uh, Professor Francesco D'Andrea. He graduated at the Catholic University in Milan, and then he got a specialization in, classical, in classics and letters. Uh, he became assistant professor at the University of Lecce. Our university nowadays is the University of Salento, but we changed name recently. In the past, it was the University of Lecce. And then he took a chair as an uh, as, um, associate professor and uh, later on as a full professor of archaeology and history of Greek and Roman art. He has been the head of the research area of uh, human sciences in our high school, Isufi. He has been professor at the Catholic University of Milan, at the University of Basilicata in Matera, and uh, of Lugano in Swiss. In 2001, he founded uh, here in Lecce the Institute of Archaeological and Monumental Heritage of the National Research Council, and he led it from 2001 to 2010. From 93 to 97, he was elected member of the National Council of Cultural and Environmental Heritage, and since the year 2000, he is the head of the Italian archaeological mission in Hierapolis of Fija in Turkey. He got uh, several uh, national honors. I don't want to take your time in listening all of them. Uh, just let me say that he directed uh, the Erasmus Socrates project of archaeology between the University of Lecce and Amsterdam, Pau, Barcelona, Louvain, Thessaloniki, Aix-en-Provence, Montpellier, and Coimbra. He participated and directed uh, several archaeological missions in Luni, in Magna Grecia, Metaponto, Sibaris, Sicily, and within the Mediterranean area in Malta, Cyprus, and Turkey. Here in Salento, he has directed archaeological digs, designed and created the Museum of Cavallino, the Park of Warriors of Vaste, the historical cultural itinerary among the Messapian walls of Castro, the Eco Museum of Stone Landscape in Aquarica. He's author of uh, almost 250 publications, including articles, uh, reviews, and uh, books. So let me say that uh, from many, many, many years, he digs all over the world searching for antiques. If you invite him at home, do not show your cellar because he will start digging also there. <laughs> it's quite dangerous <laughs> in some sense. Uh, for me, uh, I know him from quite a bit of time, and for me, he's our Indiana Jones of Salento. So, <laughs> please, Professor D'Andrea. Buonasera. Uh, uh, thank you, Giorgio, for this kind invitation. But uh, you uh, told to me before, uh, when you have invited me, that GAM is a, a Congress of Archaeology. Uh, but now I have uh, discovered that uh, is some other. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, 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 the, but the theme is uh, of general interest, I, I hope. Uh, the question I shall seek to answer today is essentially theological and has tormented humanity for centuries. Since I am not a theologian, I will try to respond using the tool of scientific research and on the basis of my own personal experience. I have not been uh, to explore the gates of the hell, but I will explain. For human beings, natural phenomena such as earthquakes, volcanoes, thermal springs, and gas emission are a powerful engine for the creation of myths, arousing wonder and raising important questions. From this question arise the narrative that have inspired the greatest themes of European figurative art, Christian art in particular represents Christ's descent into Hades, 
where he frees the souls of the righteous and the patriarch in order to take them to paradise. The, this theme is depicted in the large frescoes by Pietro Lorenzetti in the lower Basilica of Assisi and in the painting of the Renaissance. In the drawing and the painting by Andrea Mantegna, the famous 15th century Venetian painter, the entrance to the underworld is depicted as an opening of modest dimension surmounted by an arch that recalls the one brought to light by our archaeological excavation in Hierapolis. The artist of the Renaissance took up the theme of the descent into Hades once more, basing their ideas on the numerous literary texts and the poets of antiquities, such as Virgil. In this stele of, from the Hellenistic age, found in, in Albania, is not far from the coast of Salento, the descent into the underworld, this, uh, the stele is of uh, third century BC, occurs by a flight of steps that leads to the river Acheron, where the ferryman Charon is waiting to take the souls across in his boat. He had to be paid a coin for the service, and for this reason the ancients placed a coin in the dead person's mouth so that they could pay for passage. Another popular Greek myth in the Renaissance was that of Orpheus, the singer from Thras who could soothe the savage beast with this music. And I will present uh, some uh, very important mosaics with Orpheus uh, from Palermo and for, from Bardo. And I want to remember also the terrible event uh, that uh, happened in uh, the most important museum of uh, mos Roman mosaics in uh, uh, Tunis uh, is a very is a terrible uh, uh, attack against the culture, uh, against our common culture. The singing of Orpheus is also enabled him to enter the underworld alive, to free his beloved bride Eurydice. Such a figure could not help but draw the interest of Renaissance musicians such as Claudio Monteverdi, who in the 1607, at the court of the Gonzagas in Mantova, created an authentic masterpiece, L'Orfeo, Ta Favola e Musica. This work, which marked the beginning of European musical theater, included dramatic action, choral singing and dance, of particular intensity is the scene in which the song calves the terrible ferryman Charon, and Orpheus managed to pass through the gate to the underworld and find his beloved Eurydice. Uh, some minutes of the... <laughs> Consolato cantore, il tuo pianto e il tuo canto, ma lunge, lunge sia da questo petto, ti è qua.
In another musical masterpiece with the same scene of Orpheus and Eurydice, written by Christoph Willibald Gluck in 1762, the dramatic moment in which Orpheus crosses the threshold of the underworld is represented by an extraordinary symphonic movement and the dance of Fauris and Spectris. The theme continues in European figurative art with the surreal and grotesque painting of Hieronymus Bosch, in which the gateway to the underworld is represented as a mask with an enormous mouth that swallows souls. In 19th century Paris, influenced by the poetry of Dante Alighieri, the great Auguste Rodin created a masterpiece of his own the large bronze sculpture of the gates of hell. Among the images in this monumental sculptural group is the figure of Minos in uh, the center, uh, the judge of the dead, who was to become one of the most famous work in the history of art, known as the thinker, il pensatore. In the libertine environment of 19th century Paris, the gateway to the underworld served as the entrance to a meeting place where those present could enjoy the pleasures of life in infernal scenes populated by devils and harlots. An example is Offenbach's Orphée à l'Enfer, which includes the famous French cancan music, 
a metaphor for an inferno rich in exciting adventures. However, the descent into the underworld is also a metaphor for events linked to the contemporary issues, as in the Carton and Süddeutsche Zeitung, in which Pope Francis descend into the underworld to unmask the devils of Vatican finance. Uh, Franciscus in their Unterwelt. Uh, natural phenomena in geodynamically active areas characterized by intense volcanic activity and high seismic and tectonic activity, various geogenic gases can be released to the atmosphere depending on the local geological regime. Geogenic gas emissions can lead to enhanced carbon dioxide concentration that affects and even threaten life in the area. Carbon dioxide of geological origin is formed within the earth, Earth's mantle or crust and is released to the atmosphere not only by volcanoes, but also through the soil in geothermal areas. Gases reach the Earth's surface through zone of enhanced vertical permeability within the crust, such as volcanic conduits, volcano tectonic structure and faults. Specifically, faults generally act an important pathways for migration to the surface of carbon dioxide, originating from deep thermometamorphism in carbonate rock or mantle degassing. When the gas leaves the lithosphere pedosphere system, it reaches the adjacent atmosphere where it normally mixes with the air due to the convention triggered by the sun or wind. Being heavier than air, however, carbon dioxide, this is a place uh, near uh, Valle d'An Santo uh, where the, the, there is this phenomenon. Carbon dioxide can accumulate and reach high concentration in valleys, depressions, and poorly ventilated zones, and become dangerous for organisms. The reason is the specific density of CO2 gas, which is 1.5 times heavier than air. This phenomenon is also seen in wine cellars, where CO2 for, from fermentation accumulates at the cellar bottom, posing a potentially lethal threat for winemakers. Places characterized by this natural phenomena struck the imagination of the ancients, inspiring poems such as the Aeneid, which tells the story of a Trojan hero Aeneas journey to the underworld. The entrance was near Lake Averno in Campania, in this uh, wonderful landscape, uh, but uh, is a dangerous place because the name Averno uh, de derives from the Greek word Aornos, uh, with no birds. Ornos is bird in Greek, uh, ornithologia comes from this. Sim, uh, from this world, since these animals were killed by the fumes of asphyxiating gas. In the Mediterranean area, these places are associated with myths and religious practices linked to the presence of a terrible divinity who can cause death. However, this phenomenon is not limited to the Mediterranean. Such gas-filled depressions are found all over the world. In Rwanda, in Africa, for example, they are called mazuku, evil wind. Carcasses of reptiles, birds, gorillas, and even elephants are sometimes found in their close vicinity. During the Middle Age, Dante Alighieri in the Divina Commedia described the distinguishing of flames near the thermal water of the river Bulicame close to Viterbo. In his Inferno, he describes this geothermal phenomenon with the additional degassing of sulfurous and carbonic gases as a hot stream of blood and sulfur. Although he did not know the type of gas, Dante clearly describes the physical action of highly concentrated carbon dioxide. 
cosa non fu dagli occhi tuoi scorta, notabil come lo presente rio, che sopra sé tutte fiammelle ha morta. Is the uh, extinguishing of flames when they arrive to the level of the river because of the CO2 gases. And this is described in the Middle Age by Dante Alighieri with precision, is very, very important. In the Mediterranean, other entrances to the underworld are found in places linked to the presence of Pluto. Pluto is the god, uh, this statue I have not found uh, in my excavation, is uh, in the Museo Borghese a Roma, I, and, uh, and represent Pluto, the god king of the underworld, who emerged on his chariot from the depths of the earth to abduct Proserpina, or Core, to be his bride. It is the masterpiece of, uh, uh, of Bernini, of the famous uh, uh, sculptor. However, Proserpina was allowed to return to the land of the living for six months a year, corresponding to the advent of spring and the rebirth of nature. Uh, is, uh, but uh, we wait uh, the, the coming of Proserpina, also in Lecce, because uh, the, the spring is not uh, uh, come. For Carl U Gustav Jung, Kore represents the archetype of the dual female nature, a goddess born and raised by her mother Demeter in an environment uh, dominated by women. She is, however, attracted to Hades, the dark side of men, who she cannot do without. She is a hybrid, a paradoxical creature, and today is considered an example of the myth of the dual personality incarnating the subdivision of the ego. At this point of our conservation, conversation, I would like to say something about my experience in Hierapolis, a famous archaeological site in Turkey. You can see here uh, three, 300 kilometers a kilometer for, from the coast. Here, the Italian archaeological mission, currently under my di direction, with the coordination of the University of Salento, has been uh, working for almost 60 years in a framework of extensive international cooperation. This is the reconstruction, the illustration of the, uh, the, the, the town in Roman period. In Hierapolis, we have conducted highly important excavation and the restoration, such as that of the ancient theater. Uh, you can see the different uh, period of uh, uh, restoration. And uh, now the, the, the scene of the theater is possible to, to visit is in this condition. With the, and this is a 3D reconstruction of the facade. Another monument is the Frontinus Gate, a monumental entrance to the city, and the Byzantine sanctuary with the tomb of the Apostle. This is also uh, after the recent restoration of the, uh, the, the gate. And uh, the sanctuary, the most important uh, sanctuary of Byzantine period, is the, uh, the sanctuary with the tomb of the Apostle Philip, was martyred in this city of the Anatolia. You can see uh, the reconstructed uh, colonnade of the altar and uh, in front the facade of the tomb, a Roman tomb where the uh, apostle was uh, buried. Here, the gateway to the underworld, which was brought to light by the Italian excavation, manifests the dual nature of this phenomena arousing fear, but also beauty. This is the uh, uh, Corrado Prima. Uh, you can see Hierapolis Pamukkale with all the fault in the valley, the seismic fault. And from this, uh, the, this semi seismic fault crosses the wall of the ancient city, forming a continuous series of cracks, casps, and caves. From these deep fractures in the earth crust, various gases are emitted, including carbon dioxide, which causes death by asphyxiation. And uh, the, the earthquake uh, produced many 
uh, falling wall, walls, and etc. A thermal spring waters also flow from these cracks, forming the white cascade of travertine that have made the site of Pamukkale famous all over the world. Indeed, uh, it has been added to the UNESCO list of World Heritage Sites. In Turkish, this locality is called Pamukkale, which means Castle of Cotton, since the white limestone formation recalled the flower of this plant. Uh, this photograph, uh, you can see the cotton plants and the uh, formation of a travertine. This place is also described by Strabon, a Greek from Anatolia. Uh, Anatolia is uh, today Turkey. Uh, during the reign of Augustus, he wrote a famous book on the geography of the known world. Among the sites that inspired the awe due to their extraordinary characteristic, the Greek used the word paradoxologiai for the wonderful phenomena from which also the term paradox, uh, extraordinary uh, thing, derives, are the caves found along the seismic fault in the valley of the river Meander. You can see here the, the Aegean coast and uh, in green the river Meander with the three caves, uh, most important caves of Hierapolis, Nisa, Akarak, Mios. And the gas in all the caves uh, uh, is interpreted in the ancient time uh, as plutonian. The caves were called plutonia because of the emission of CO2, and they were considered entrances to the underworld, ruled over by the god Pluto, also known as Hades. These plutonia are found, uh, as you can see, in Nisa, and it's interesting to see also the, the coins from this uh, city, uh, uh, connected with the uh, uh, sacrifice of uh, uh, bulls, of uh, Tori, and uh, here uh, with the, in Hierapolis, the coins represent uh, 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 the abduction of Proserpina. Strabon and other ancient writers, such as Pliny the Elder, dedicate their most detailed description to the Plutonian of Hierapolis, where birds died of asphyxiation from the fumes. And today, it's possible to control and to see the same phenomenon. In addition, in ancient uh, period, bulls were sacrificed not by having their throat cut, but by simply leading them to the cave entrance and allowing them to be suffocated by the gases. This drawing, published in the French periodical after the discovering uh, in 2012, uh, Science et uh, dramatically depicts the sacrifice of the bulls with the carcasses of the suffocated animals being dragged away from the cave. Uh, this is a reconstruction based uh, on the uh, findings in this area. But the thermal waters also had health benefits, and the hot water that flowed from the thermal springs was collected in basin, uh, placed at the sides of a circular buildings where visitors to the sanctuary could bathe and treat their illnesses. And the entrance, you can see the arch, is the entrance of the grotto. After these purification activities, it was possible to descend into a sacred chamber that the Greeks called the Abaton, an unviolable, sacred, inaccessible place. But before to go to the Abaton, uh, we have found a trace of, uh, uh, of a sacrifice and the object that, uh, that, that were offered to the uh, ancient gods. gods. Uh, the, the place, this abaton, could be accessed only by to those who had performed sacrifice and other ritual acts such as fasting and had been initiated into the mysteries of Pluto and his bride Proserpina. First, the worshipper had to cross over the crevice of the fault. You can see 
uh, very clear the crevice of the fall. Then in the dark of the chamber, they could hear the flow of water at the bottom of the fracture and sense the bitter smell of the gas. In the Abaton, incubation practice took place, uh, and we have found uh, in the uh, inner uh, room the beds where it was possible to have the incubation. While the worshippers slept on beds inside the chamber, they received the revelation concerning their destiny and were cured of their illnesses. The excavation in the area in front of the cave led to many discoveries. This is because in the sixth century, this is the area in front of uh, the grotto, the entrance of the grotto, and uh, on the architrave is uh, the inscription of Pluto, Plutoni, with the dedication of, uh, to Pluto. The Christian in the sixth century AD demolished the sanctuary and doubled the statues and the marble blocks in front of the entrance to the cave. We, uh, you can see many, many blocks that they have put in, the, in this area, which was considered to be infested with demons. Thus, the excavation yielded the capitals, column, and architrave of an entire marble portico, bearing a dedication in Greek to the emperor Nero. You can see here Neroni, Claudio, is the dedication to the emperor. Uh, the statue of a three-headed dog, also, uh, this is during the excavation in the water, uh, where uh, we have found the, the three-headed dog, Ke uh, Kerberos, the ferocious beast that guarded the entrance to the underworld, was discovered right in front of the cave, immersed in the thermal waters that flow up from below. The sculptor clearly sought to represent a feature of a typically Anatolian Turkish species, the Kangal, the sheepdog of the Anatolian islands that must defend its flock from wolves and therefore wears a collar with iron spikes. Also discovered were two marble statues of serpents, again linked to the underworld, in that they live below ground. And this is the reconstruction because they were part of a sort of altar placed in front of the cave. Lastly, we found fragments of the colossal marble statue of Pluto, more than three and a half meters high, seated on a throne with the Cerberus by his side. This is the uh, colossal statue to your uh, right, and to the left, uh, a copy in marble that we have found in the uh, theater, but it's the copy of the cult statue. Many other marble sculptures were found inside the sanctuary, such as this perfectly conserved head of a female divinity. Perhaps it was Kore herself, or more probably Aphrodite. In order to study the interaction between this place of worship and natural phenomena, we set up a broad-based international and interdisciplinary project for cooperation between archaeologists, geologists, archaeosismologists, and chemists. It also included the naturalists who conduct research into natural CO2 emissions and their impact on the surrounding environment, including birds, other small animals, insects, and plants. A German team from the University of Essen and a Turkish team from the University of Ankara measured the emission in various points of the ancient city and recorded a high percentage of CO2. And you can see the different uh, point. Uh, where there is theatron is the point uh, corresponding to the plutonium, to the sanctuary of uh, Pluto. A more intensive survey was performed in spring in last year. CO2, oxygen, and radon were determined at 15 different spots, east and west to the sanctuary. You can see also theatron correspond to the uh, plutonium. 
highest CO2 concentration were found within the grotto, and the plutonium and at a sinkhole some 25 meters east of the grotto. Radon concentrations most parallel the concentration of geogenic CO2. This behavior is understandable as radon is transported from its geological source with a matrix of CO2 as the carrier. As we have seen, in antiquity, the later effects of the emissions of carbon dioxide induced fear and doubt in the popular imagination, giving rise to myths and rituals designed to exorcise the danger. Today, CO2 emission, not geogenic, but those produced by unchecked industrial activities, are once more creating a justified alarm and fear in global public opinion. This is a serious threat that is clearly not connected with the fear of the underworld as in antiquity, but rather with phenomena linked to the greenhouse effect, which is producing a dramatic climate change with devastating effects for vast areas of the globe and for entire population that inhabit it. Carbon dioxide also constitutes a serious problem for the conservation of artistic heritage, which is subject to the pressures of mass tourism. Inside the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo's frescoes must be protected from the CO2 emissions caused by its 20,000 daily visitors, 6 million a year. Dan Brown, the famous uh, author all over the, the world for his best-selling novel, Da Vinci Code, touched on these themes in this latest novel, Inferno, published in 2013. The book borrows from Dante Alighieri and his journey to the Inferno in the Divina Commedia, the poem that constitutes the plot. At the heart of the narrative is the threat posed by an uncontrolled increase in the world population and the current model of economic growth. This graph, published in 2008 by the New Scientist magazine, highlights the most pressing environmental emergencies that could have a catastrophic impact and potentially cause the extinction of humanity. Together with the growing demand for fresh water, the disappearance of the ozone layer, deforestation, and other worrying problems, this threat includes the increased concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere of industrial origin, with the consequent worsening of the greenhouse effect and increase in the global temperature. Based on this scientific data, the novel tells the story of a scientist who plans a bioterrorist attack with a virus that causes mass sterility among the world population. The capsule that frees the virus, which has a built-in timing device, is planted in a well in Venice. Faced with the environmental disaster described by Dan Brown, which recalls Dante Inferno, the CO2 emissions from the plutonium of Hierapolis may seem rather trivial, and yet 2,000 years ago they were the cause of terror and lay behind the myths and religious practices that served to exorcise the danger. Fortunately, Dante's poem also provides inspiration for more joyful activities, such as the Offerta Divina, an offerta di divine offer, a commercial offer, as you can see from this advertisement, the opportunity to spend a weekend in the caves of Castelcivita for only 64, 65 euros. The discovery of the plutonium of Hierapolis in 2012 aroused considerable interest in the international media, contributing to an increase in tourist number. Hierapolis is one of the most important archaeological sites in Turkey, visited every year by 1.8 million tourists. They are drawn by the white travertine cascade and the thermal pools where they can swim among the columns and other remains of marble buildings while thermal water flow 
from cracks in the rocks. At times, mass tourism can be a cause for concern, as was the case last August at the age of the touring season when the inferno shifted from the plutonium to the thermal pools with masses of valve naked bodies splashing about around the ancient column submerged by the water. And this is a problem about the, uh, the management of, a tourist, of mass tourism. In some cases, news of the discovery of the plutonium was presented by the international place in original way, horror, tort zur Hölle entdeckt. In, the, in this uh, newspaper, which is distributed free in Vienna on the metro, next to a pretty girl in a bikini, the discovery is presented in this term of hor horror and horrible discovery. Television also has also played its part, and the team from an Italian program with the meaningful title of the Mistero, Mystery, was anxious to document the discovery. As a, con as a condition of filming, we asked that the subject be treated in a sober, respectful way, since the program often deals with topics such as UFO, UFO, extraterrestrials, unexplained phenomena and other mysteries, which are popular with the wider public. At the moment of filming, we had still not demolished the wall that closed off the entrance of the cave, and uh, the program presenter thus concluded the report by promising to return when the wall had been removed and the mystery thus finally revealed. We, we, you can see some part. <laughs> Solo il 40% di Hierapolis è stato riportato alla luce. Questo significa che la maggior parte di questo territorio rimane un mistero. Un mistero che forse, per essere svelato, necessita dell'abbattimento di questo muro. Il professore ci ha detto che questo muro verrà abbattuto nella primavera dell'anno prossimo. E noi ci saremo. Nel frattempo però voglio provare a seguire il suo consiglio e bere quest'acqua miracolosa che donava la grazia, donava la capacità di parlare parlare con le divinità dell'oltretomba ai profeti che venivano in questo luogo sacro. Lo duca e io per quel cammino ascoso intrammo a ritornare nel chiaro mondo e senza cura aver da alcun riposo salimmo su. È il primo e io il secondo. Tanto chi vidi delle cose belle che porta il ciel per un pertugio tondo. E quindi uscimmo a rivedere le stelle. The quotation of Dante is a black man. I've asked a very uh, sober uh, way to, to present this discovering, but uh, in the middle of the program, we have seen also some skeleton in the grotto, but, uh, but it's, a, it's a little comic uh, solution. Uh, it was in the most recent excavation campaign that we removed the wall that the Byzantines had built in the sixth century to prevent those who still frequented the site from accessing the cave. Indeed, at that time, there they were still many who continued to venerate the ancient divinities in the sixth century, despite the dominance of Christianity. After having restored the entrance arch with some difficulty, we were able to enter, but it was not possible to work inside the cave due to the gas fumes. For this reason, we had to postpone the task until the following year, when we could enter with the suitable equipment. And you can see now the uh, partially restored of the entrance. And you can see this white uh, uh, are the gases that come from the, from the thermal water. But uh, I have preferred to don't, don't go in the grotto. 
because uh, really uh, is a little bit uh, dangerous. We did not, however, follow the example of Empedocle, the famous philosopher from Agrigentio, who in the 5th century BC threw himself into the crater of the volcano Etna in order to discover the cause of the eruption and was died, was killed by the volcano, and for this reason was honored as a god by his fellow citizen. I have preferred to remain in life and uh, without being honored by the Lecce citizen. <laughs> However, we observed that the inside of the cave was completely covered by a black patina, in addition to the gases and the seismic nature of the site, this color of the internal wall also makes the place appear to be a manifestation of infernal power. We did manage, however, albeit with some difficulty, to take sample of this thick patina, which was analyzed in CNR laboratories in Florence. It was found that the black substance was formed over a long period and was composed of a manganese oxide. This means that the gases and the substances that have turned the cave black come from extremely deep geological layers. Thus, in a close dialogue between archaeologists and scholars of many disciplines, our extraordinary adventure and the story of this extraordinary site in Turkey continue. And uh, I, I invite uh, you to, uh, to, to visit uh, also during this summer the excavation and the site and the wonderful site of uh, uh, Hierapolis uh, without entering in the grotto. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>